What's good, YouTube? It's your main man, ABD Hero, back again with another video. And earlier this week, it was announced that Leangelo Ball was going to be signed to the Charlotte Hornets um, training camp roster and officially donned that Hornets jersey in the NBA game. We said, we excited. We don't want no slander. We don't know what, yeah, but yeah, none of that stuff. Um, we just going to celebrate. We celebrated, and now... In today's video, we're going to go a little bit deeper. We're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly, potentially, of this situation. And we're going to analyze this interview from Leangelo Ball and Rod Boom. Let's go. Bees! AB the hero. Back at it, baby. All right, so... Before the news was announced that Leangelo Ball was going to be playing for the Charlotte Hornets, there was a lot of conversations that we had on this channel that um, I went to Flight Sports. We were talking to FYF, hoop jargon. Just a lot of folks had their own opinion on whether or not um, today would come, whether he would even get invited to camp, whether he'd get a shot, an actual shot at an NBA roster, whether they actually valued him as a player on the squad. Like what, what really did they think of Leangelo Ball? And I think that it's a really smart decision, right? Between from this Hornets organization to wait until the day of media day to announce to us that the final person on the roster going into training camp will be Leangelo Ball. Now, it's also important to note that Miles Bridges is in limbo. His case keeps getting pushed back and pushed back. And at some point, if he was ever to return, somebody got to go. Um, beauty of this situation is all of these guys who got to sign into the training camp roster will have some time to really solidify themselves on this squad. That's also Leangelo Ball. We don't need a lot of time. We just need the right amount of time. So in today's video, what I want to talk about is the good, the bad, and the ugly. And um, y'all know me, man. I like to do things from the positive angle. So I think as we talk about these things, it's never going to be as good as you think it is. It's never going to be as bad as you think it is. And it's definitely not going to ever be as ugly as you think it is either. Um, this is a great opportunity for Leangelo Ball. And as you see in the message or quote that we got from... Um, LaMelo on this situation we'll get into that a little bit deeper down he said man it's just good seeing a human work and that has always been my messaging and my response to people when they start to talk to me about whether or not Leangelo um, making this roster this year is a possibility, whether or not he's going to the G League, whether or not all of these things, even the idea of like, yo, this is just a training camp, but who don't? To me, it's all progress. When you really look at Leangelo Ball's story and, and the journey that he went on to be able to suit up and wear that jersey in a game that says Hornets on the front, to me, is a big deal and it's something dope to see so let's get into this article here and uh as you see the title charlotte horn and signs leangelo ball one year deal reuniting him with his brother now this article here is written by one roderick boone from the charlotte observer um tell tell if y'all see this man go send roderick a, a note and tell him to go ahead and holler at your boy man we come into charlotte and no uh, we need to talk man uh but let's get into this here all right so it's a couple of things. We're not going to read through this whole entire article, but there's some quotes that I feel like are very poignant and, and important for us to touch and tackle. Uh, first things first, though, we need to know that this is a non-guaranteed contract. So that means that he signed my dog getting that bag, probably the NBA minimum at the moment. And at the point where in which they say, bro, you got to go to the G League, bro, you got to go whatever you know what I mean he'll make that move and and they'll readjust that contract from there um to my understanding though this is a a good spot for him to be in when moving down to the G League or whatnot right because what happens is there's 
if you remember last year, right? And, and I could be, let me make sure I'm right with this. But if you remember last year, um, they had two way players, right? I believe it was Caboco and I can't remember the other guy's name. But you had the guys who were, um, oh man, it almost hit me. They had two way guys. And then you had other guys who were moving back and forth. The uh, Nick Richards, I believe, moved for a little bit. Kai Jones moved. Um, Book Knight, Thor, all of these guys. And so hopefully, even if Leangelo does go down and play some time in the Greensboro Swarm, he'll fall under, you know what I mean, that situation, which I believe is a better financial situation than being a two way player so we got here it means a lot to be here and play in front of all these guys ball total observer uh, for sure it's a great opportunity for me and I, I think that one of the things that you realize from listening to a lot of these quotes here or reading them is that it's not missed on him that this is a great opportunity, right? For a lot of people who spend times perfecting their craft, really honing in and working, sometimes you get so caught up in thinking like you have to be so confident and, and talk with so much vibrato, vibrato and it's just got to seem like, yo, this is meant to be and all of this stuff. My man really seems to be um, living in this moment, understanding what this moment is, not feeling too much pressure from it, but also so, you know, really being intentional about his words and some of the stuff that he's saying here. I feel like I can be a part of a team, Ball said. I'm just going to play my hardest for sure, but I feel like my game will carry itself and hopefully I can make the team for sure and play with my brother. But I'm not worried about nothing. I'm just excited to go in and play my hardest for real and let my talent talk for itself. So to me in this quote, I think that we get a few of our answers um that that folks had prior to this signing right prior to us getting any information from leangelo ball people wanting to know why are you still hanging out in charlotte why are you in greensboro why are you chasing this organization and he says it right in here the opportunity he probably knew it was on the way but there is something special for him to be able to play with his brother it's nice that's that's a goal of his i'm getting here and that's even cooler to be able to play with my brother so we got to give him a nod to that right because when you think about the ball brothers and their journey a lot of it is intertwined a lot of it is them spending hours on hours playing basketball together and i got a brother man and i will tell you this that we dreamed growing up of of being professionals or being able to work together or doing whatever so I think while some people see that as a knock that, you know, you're trying to get an opportunity to play with your brother and then maybe there's some nepotism there for most people. That's a positive point. And for Leangelo, it seems to be a positive point for him as well. Um, one of the things that we notice here is you see words like um, I'm just going to play my hardest. You see that up here one time right you see it again here uh, finishing it i was gonna play my hardest i'm, I'm let the talent talk i'm not gonna speak this is this is what you want to hear from a guy who potentially is is the 20th man on the roster who understands that even though they're a celebrity even though he's probably the only 20th man on a training camp roster that folks would tune in to watch somebody read an article uh about their interview um um, he still understands that the work has to be put in. And from what I can tell that he has a great understanding that a lot of the work um, has to have already been put in. And he had to do that over the summer. So let's see here. Here we talk about what I was saying earlier about the uh, Miles Bridges uh, coming back on that non-guaranteed um, contract. We know that um, I don't think that last year's season in the G League from a statistical standpoint was was really groundbreaking for anybody when it comes to Leangelo. But I believe that he must have showed people things behind the scenes that they were able to buy into that was able to buy him more time and create him more opportunities. Now, here's the part of this article that I feel like is probably the most important right because when it came to the hornets one of the biggest questions that they had um this entire off season this in last season and just really determining what's going to happen with them in the future was the coach 
Um, there was a lot of folks who this last year was saying Borrego gotta go. A lot of folks who said, but Borrego need to stay. Um, there was folks who were like me who said, I really, there were things that I felt like Borrego did well, but I felt like one of the one of the places that he was dropping the ball was understanding that you got to build superstars. Sometimes when you're in that San Antonio Spurs mindset and you just keep drafting superstars, you feel like, yo, all we got to do is let people um, develop into something. We just hold them off a little bit, pull them back, wait their turn. This is a line. This is this and all of that stuff. And the most of the NBA is like, yo, Trey Young, you're a superstar. All right, bro, go ahead and do your thing. Luca, superstar, do your thing. Dame Lillard. Okay, go ahead, do your thing. And that's one of the things that the Hornets were missing the first two years with Leanne, with LaMelo Ball is that, bro, we got a superstar. Hey, man, go do your thing. And from what I'm hearing from Steve Clifford, um, he feels like a guy who is, hey, man, go do your thing. That is one of the things that I was saying when they hired him. I was excited about is because I watched him. They gave him credit oftentimes for being somebody who was developing these new players and young guys and being able to roll a ball out with them and say, hey, you go do your thing. So I'm hoping that he bring that that uh, methodology to this Hornets team and let LaMelo do his thing. However, what I was saying is I feel like it's important is he has some information on LiAngelo Ball. So now we know that LiAngelo has been around the organization through the James Borrego era and played in that in, that, in the summer uh, workouts and then earned a spot on that summer league team, then earned a spot on the G League team. But there's something to be said when you bring in a new coach and he has to see something in you as well. He has to say, you know what? Not only are you going to be able to play on our affiliate teams in Summer League and G League, but bro, you come into camp. And so here's what he has to say. He's been here for a good part of the summer. That's a big deal. Um, Hornets coach Steve Alford said he did a lot of the optional workouts right here. He's good to have around. He's tough. He can really shoot. He likes to be in the gym. He's a good worker. So those are the kind of guys you want at camp. It's going to play play out as we go along. I appreciate this from two standpoints. Obviously, these are um, high remarks from, from Steve Clifford um, in regards to, I want to call him Steve Alford so bad. So if I do that, I apologize. Um, these are high regard remarks from Steve Clifford on LiAngelo Ball, right? Being a hard worker, being able to see that shooting is, is a strength of his. Um, being somebody who wants to be in there with the training staff and putting in that good work, right? And as you heard LiAngelo say a few different times, he is uh, wants to try his hardest, wants to... I feel like that's reflected in this statement as well. But what I do think is also important is this last line here that says um, it's going to play out as we go along. So when I look at how things have played out up until this point with LiAngelo Ball, we see there is these the Hornets to me have realized that there's a delicate PR situation that they have to dance with when it comes to LiAngelo Ball. So this is why we do a video a couple weeks ago saying the Hornets just signed four guys to their training camp roster because they posted that on their um, website. And then we have to follow up the day of media day and say, hey, y'all just signed LiAngelo Ball. There's some tact that's happening here. So I think that what I hear from him is we're not jumping out the window we're going to let things play out due to whatever plan we have in place. So I'm hoping that that means that, you know, there's a rollout coming and that is to feature LiAngelo Ball. If you go through the Hornets Instagram today, I believe there was even a post that um that featured him. And I don't believe that there's any other guys who, who are on that like 
swarm summer league signed to the training camp situation that got that type of treatment there was also the amount of love that he got just from the website and from their organization from making that signing um was not the amount of love that these other guys got as well so to me that speaks to hey there may be some opportunity for him on the end of that hornish bench um, and hopefully he can earn, you know, a spot in the middle of that Hornets bench as well. All right. So let's keep going here. All right. So talking about um, those sessions at the training facility, um, Steve Clifford, yeah, got an up close view of Ball's gritty style. The 23 year old did enough in the eyes of the team's hierarchy to earn a training camp deal. Ball was able to have the best of both worlds in a sense, hanging out with LaMelo while also feeding his passion for basketball. I feel like I was on a flight sports um, stream the other day and this was a, a topic of debate, right? Of, of how much of this was either a, a, a benefit to LaMelo of having Jello around or how much of having LaMelo be able to be in his position was a benefit to Jello. And from what I can see here, it seems like there's a two way street of benefit for these guys to just be brothers and have each other around. He smiled just thinking about the times they shared in Charlotte. That's my favorite part about coming up here in the summer for real ball said it reminds me of the my old days for real me and Melo. i used to play with him all the time so it's the same deal here even though it's on the nba level but it feels good um, being around my brother and sh i ain't gonna lie bro when he says we used to play together all of the time can we think about the fact that these two dudes moved to lithuania together to play basketball um that's a big deal right can you think about the fact that these guys played in the junior basketball association and traveled through europe on a bus for two months together um hotel to hotel it's just a lot of bonding time in those situations so it, it really speaks to the you know how how impactful it is to just be around his brother all right so what, the thing that i want to get to before we wrap this up is this part here right and Lamelo couldn't be happier for his big bro it's great to watch he said just seeing a human work for something they really want their whole life just working so hard it's honestly a blessing for real and it could mean just that much more when he really makes it i think that this is important because this to me sound like an avd hero quote this sound like something that you would have heard from me and tempering expectations and then shutting down some of the hate or conversations that i've heard people had and they really take out of context a few things that millions upon millions of people dream to be able to sniff that nba training camp at some time to be able to sniff the g league to be able to sniff summer league is a dream that many people aspire to now that's just a step on the road for a lot of those people as well you got to keep that in context but to see a human work for something they really want their whole life just working so hard that's commendable i think that that's something that i see um even in the youtube space that's why i'd be so happy for people i think a lot of times people think that when they have some success that everybody sees them and is jealous and for me it's not even about that bro i'm happy because i love to see humans working and then being rewarded for that work so i appreciate this here um this quote from from lamello and i think that not only is he speaking some life into his brother and he's speaking some life into the doubters but i think that if you were to hear that you could apply that to your own journey as well um it's been a super long journey ball said i grew up playing basketball since i was a little kid so that's all i know i started at like five years old so that's all i know for real so i go through anything and everything to play the game i love the end goal hopefully i will play with my brother on this team so that's what i'm trying to do just get to it because i know that's where it's going to go that's where it's going to start for real when I get there for me.
Rod, boom, boy, you trying to make me cry, boy. You going to end it like that? Oh, man. What a moment. I really want to make sure people understand what's happening here. Um, I think that it's important to, to keep bringing up the fact that we've watched a LaMelo ball, a LiAngelo ball, a Lonzo ball grow as basketball players and human beings in front of our eyes for a long time, right? And I think that for me, it's a lot more personal in some capacity because not only have we watched them, you know, become who they are via the interwebs, um, but in that bit of time that we got to spend with them doing the JBA and all of that stuff, man, I'd just be proud of these dudes for for making their dreams come true because it there's another added layer of perspective that I have when I think about and that league that has 60 plus players in it who all held that same dream and the only ones who have even gotten close it's been three who've gotten close to the nba jello Melo, and then curtis hollis who was in a training camp with a g league team right the the three who got <laughs> was able to sniff uh nba arena jersey and all of that stuff out of the 60 plus guys man it really keeps a perspective on me of how great an opportunity this is and how dope a situation these guys have found themselves in and if you go way way back you know that that's why we even got this channel started shimei man ab the hero we finna get up out of here peace be the hero no, not peace, plus one, triple B's, we out.